Okay, so let's move on to traditional paid lead generation strategies. This is direct mail and telemarketing. So this is where uh, you buy postcards, you purchase leads for people to telemarket for you, and then they generate leads or the leads are generated through the mail. And then you just set the appointments to go see them over the phone, or you just simply arrive and announce and ask to get in. This strategy works for everything. It doesn't matter what level of sophistication or economic sophistication your prospects have. It all works just fine. Of course, you just got to find a corresponding market to make it work. Uh, some examples of markets where uh, paid lead generation traditional methods work very well include Medicare, uh, whether you're doing Medicare Advantage or Medicare Supplement. Uh, these uh, plain, boring old marketing pieces work fantastic. Uh, also, final expense, of course, works very well. Uh, telemarketing leads for both products work very good. Even mortgage protection, which tends to skew a little bit younger, does it a little bit older too. Those work fantastically well uh, as well. Um, as far as uh, probably term insurance works fine, but the re one of the ways that you want to utilize any kind of paid leads, this is just a basic rule of thumb, is to target those leads to a list. The list is the most important element of your marketing piece. You have the message, the market, and the media. So what that means is the message is what the lead says. That accounts for 20% of its success. The market, or the, the media is how it's sent. I, I should say, I think the media is 20%. Media is, is it direct mail, is it telemarketing? The market is the list, and the message is what's said on the piece. Those two account for 80% of the success. So the list to me is the biggest element. If you, if you target if you figure out what the list, you got to figure out a list that really corresponds with the kind of product you want to sell. So, you know, for example, uh, Medicare is, again, keep using it because it is a deadline, a specific thing that must be done. If you can set a mailer out to where uh, people are uh, just turning 65 in the next three months, you're going to get a good response from that. Or if it's AEP, it's annual enrollment period, people are thinking about switching their Medicare plans. And when you dump mail around that time, you'll get higher response rates because it's a seasonality effect. So the list is very well planned and you get a better response because of it, because people are in that mode. It's like targeting for Christmas mailers in July. It doesn't make sense. Uh, if you're trying to promote Christmas sales, you do it close to Christmas. And seasonally speaking, it's, the, uh, it's Black Friday that you wanna at least be super serious about developing. Uh, also, uh, other products, mortgage protection. Look, the, the impetus behind mortgage protection is when a new mortgage is filed. And uh, these people now have this debt that they've got to maintain and manage. So it's really important for them to, um, uh, you know, we mail to them and they see the card like, oh yeah, this is interesting. They're going to be much more uh, likely to be open-minded to what you're saying. But that's the idea behind really good direct mail. The more broad base the mailer and the more cold traffic that you're doing off of direct mail, the higher cost you usually are going to pay. It's not that it can't work. It's just that you really do best with direct mail when you've got a very well-refined list. Uh, take it from me. You know, I do mailers to my existing list of clients, and my response rates are usually triple, the quadruple what you would get off of a cold mailer, and then I sell a lot more of them, of course, because I've already sold them something before. So they're already sold on what it is that I bring to the table. They've already bought from me once, so a lot higher chance will buy from me again. So um, as far as with direct mail, uh, other products out there, I'm sure there's direct mail. I mean, we see postcard mailers for retirement planning, um, uh, for financial planners, and, and that gets people butts in the seminars. That certainly is, is effective to some extent, although I've heard that's deteriorated over the years. It's gotten more popular. But... Uh, you know, there's a lot of markets that use a paid lead generation approach just to get people to raise their hands and then for you to just show up unannounced or set an appointment over the phone to speak to them. And, and it works very well. I'm of the persuasion, the uh, last thing I'll add here, I think direct mail is the better course of action for the vast majority of agents than telemarketing leads if you do paid leads. And, and the reason is, is that telemarketing is a dying medium. Um, it, there's less and less house ho phones every year and less and less people that are not on the do not call list. It, it's something that everybody's been predicting the death of telemarketing. There, I know people do very well at it, so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just think direct mail is still where the vast majority of the people are at. You're going to get a lot more market saturation and stay in an area geographically a lot more. Whereas if you try to do telemarketing, you end up sp spanning like multiple counties to fulfill enough activity to make a, a good stab at the business. 
So there's your traditional paid lead generation strategy. Thank you.